Hey, 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 my hands are cold. Oh, that's better. Hi. That's cold. Who turned out the lights? I think that's right. No, you're exposing the sensor. Do that again. I need my camera. Frustrating. Sky starting to change colour. If I'm quick enough, I could, I could get my tripod out, camera out, filters out, and shoot sunrise over this water if I'm quick enough. Guy looks like it might go, and I've got that. So, <laughs> world record. I've got to set up quickly and shoot. I really hope there's no wind interference with this, but kit's out. Actually, I'm not even like a car. To be honest, I don't even know why I bother locking a car because there's no one around here. It's probably just me for a million miles. in the background and make a light racket. <gasps> right guys, hi, welcome back. Uh, another video, we are back in the Yorkshire Dales. And in today's video, I want to look at ND filters. What's that? The pouch, uh, this hasn't got my packed lunch in it. This has actually got my filter set. Um, depending on where you purchase your filters from, uh, you normally get a pouch just to slot them away nicely. So what is an ND filter? That's neutral density filter. For those of you that have not done or just started to shoot landscapes and thought, and probably heard of filters and thought, well, like me when I first started, didn't have a clue about them and looked at these bits of glass and thought what the hell do I do with them? I'm really not sure. Well that's what I'm going to show you today. Nice simple terminology for you to understand just to get you started using these because to be honest once you use a filter your whole world's going to change and so is your photography. In my pack inside here we have graduated filters, ND filters, so what's the difference? A graduated filter is used mainly on the sky and what that does, it will retain the definition in the clouds when you're shooting long exposure. This is quite an important uh, filter to have and to be honest, most of the time I shoot landscapes, I've always got one of these in front of the lens. Right, this is a graduated filter. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide it down in front of the camera now. You'll see the glass come past, there we go. Um, and then you'll start to see, in a second if I get this right, uh, you see there on the horizon? So. The highlights of the clouds are blown at the moment. We put a graduated filter over, brings back the definition. So it's really important that you use a graduated filter just to keep the uh, detail really in the clouds because at the end of the day, that is forming part of your photograph. Next up we have the ND filter, the neutral density filter. The different type of uh, filters. Uh, in my pouch I've got a 3 stop, a 6 stop, a 10 stop and a 15 stop. But basically what they are, are very very dark pieces of glass. And just to show you how dark they are, 
who turned out the lights. Photography is all about light. You're gonna hear that a lot, certainly on this channel. And basically, when you're shooting long exposure shots, what you're doing is opening up the shutter to expose the sensor, which then lets in a load of light. If you don't use one of these, basically what will happen is your shot will look overexposed. So to give an example of an overexposed shot, this is pretty much what will happen. Your photograph will end up looking something like that, or like a nuclear bomb has just gone off. So you've got your exposure, you might be shooting anywhere between 1, 15, 20 seconds, a couple of minutes, you can be shooting for a, quite a long time. Now obviously the light's coming into your camera for that period of time. What this does, it compensates and it will then only let part of the light come through at a certain stage, so it sort of drip feeds it through to your camera and then basically what it does, it forms this image. The key part is getting the exposure spot on. So what I'm going to do now is go through the whole process of how I would take an image a photograph of this and select the right ND filter to get the shot that I want. I need my camera. Ta da! Right, okay, so I'm shooting with my Nikon Z7 II and I've got a Nikkor 14 to 30 uh, wide angle lens on the front here. And I've also got the um, three legged thing L bracket, which fits beautifully underneath your camera. That just basically enables you to switch it to portrait to landscape. Right, so first things first composition, important. I'm just going to sort that out quickly now while you guys take in the surroundings. Right, so I always shoot at an aperture of f8. Um, I might take it up to f11, but it's normally between the two when I'm shooting landscapes, because to be honest, most of the image is then in focus. Um, it won't be front to back focus. Uh, you need to do photo stacking with that, but that's for another video. Um, but pretty much everything that I want to be in focus is in focus. The hills in the background, not normally in focus. This shot for me is about the rocks and the reflections in the water and that's where I want your eye drawn to. So yeah, it's important to know what you're shooting. I'm just going to sort the composition out now. I want the rocks and I want the clouds. I do not want those bushes on the left. Something like that looks really nicely. So what we've got is we've got the rocks just to the left hand side and we've got the lake over to the right so you're going to see the reflection hopefully of the hills in the background and you've got this beautiful coloured sort of winter sky look really nice. Uh, yeah, why did I not want the bushes in the shot? Well, when you're shooting long exposure, uh, to be honest, wind speed today is supposed to be around 15 mile an hour. However, I don't think it is that at the minute. I'll probably say it's about five. But when you're shooting long exposure shot, anything that moves, i.e. branches, they're gonna be blurred in your shot. And to be honest, it's not the sort of thing I like. So once you've got your composition set up, um, what you're gonna do first is actually get your lens cap out. And on the back of your lens cap, um, I don't know if it's just picking it up the camera or not, but you've got a measurement right in the middle there. This is obviously a Nikon lens. I don't know if Canon, etc. cetera, um, it's different, but on the Nikon lenses, it tells you the diameter of the ring that you're gonna fit to the front of your lens. So this holder, it says it's 82 mil. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is look on my pouch. I've got loads of different rings. I'm gonna find a suitable one and then attach it to the front of the lens. And for you eagle-eyed photographers out there, you've probably already spotted, mine's already attached, so, so yeah. 82 mil lens, and all you literally do is, it's got a thread on the front of the um, lens here. You'll need to obviously take the lens hood off, and then you're just basically gonna fit it on. It'll fit snug, and then just start winding it on. Do not over tighten it though. Uh, just take it up until it doesn't go any further, uh, but don't keep screwing it until you know it's too tight because you might struggle to get it back off again. Right, okay, as I mentioned before, I always shoot aperture f8 to f11, so I'm just going to set this to f8 to start off with. Uh, ISO, I always drop mine down to 100, uh, so I brought that down now. As you can see, the image has gone quite dark, um, and now I'm going to drop the shutter speed down. I do the shutter speed last because I want to see what the existing exposure is, that's important. So I'm going to drop that down. It was on a thousand and 
it's about there. Without any filters, uh, no ND filters, no grad filters, etc. the exposure for this is 125th of a second FA ISO 100. Perfect exposure. Now, personally, you might actually like this shot. Uh, you might think, yeah, actually, that's a really nice photograph. And to be honest, yes, it is. Um, but with using ND filters, you sort of open up a world of abstract and you create something that's a little bit more surreal. Um, it's not actually what you see. It's quite difficult to explain. Um, and as you start to use filters, you'll start to visualize your shot and how it will look. It is as it is, it's rippled. Um, and this is where, to be honest, the ND filters are gonna come in and completely change your shot. Right, so within your kit, uh, you will usually get a holder. Uh, this is a Lee filters holder. Need to do a one also, that's very good. I actually do prefer the Lee filters holder, uh, just because it's really easy to fit onto the ring. So basically what happens is, you've got, I don't know if you see it, you've got this bit that pulls out like that, and it's got a metal bit there, that obviously, but when that attaches it, will slide it into place nicely and securely over the ring. So all you literally do, is you'll fit it on the front like so. I've pulled the uh, nozzle bit out, let go, that's now attached, that's not going anywhere. Nice and secure. Hopefully you can see this. If I'll just turn that around to you slightly. Um, through here is where you're gonna start sliding your filters in, your graduated filter and your ND filter. And to the sides here, left and right, there's basically little um, slots for them to slide into. It's important that you put these around the right way. So, rule of thumb, if you're using both, a graduate filter and ND filter, you put your graduate filter in first, that will go to the front, and then the ND filter will slide in behind. We'll go through that now. 99% of the time, I use a 0.9 soft grad on the sky. Uh, there are different types of graduate filters. That's not for today's video, um, but just very, very quickly, you could go for a hard grad, which basically will make this sky look a lot darker, the clouds look more thunderous, um, and I need to shoot rather quickly because those clouds are going. This is not good. Right, so as mentioned, we're gonna put it into the front section of the holder. We're literally just gonna push it down until the dark bit sits on the horizon. Et voila, like so. What you will also note is that your shot's now got a little bit darker, so you'll need to adjust your exposure. All we're gonna do is basically adjust the shutter speed on the back here and take it down until we've got good exposure. So around about there, that's about 60th of a second. Now there are a few things I'm gonna to need to point out, but I'm gonna come on to that very, very shortly just to help you out because there's things you need to be aware of. Right, next we're gonna select an ND filter. Um, and the way you select that, I'm gonna discuss very, very shortly. But for the moment, I am literally gonna stick a 10 stop ND filter in. And that goes in the back. Um, what you have got is these rubber bits here, which basically secures it in place around the lens. And all you're gonna do is use two thumbs, either side of the ND filter, and push it down, like so. Just so that the ND filter, you can see it overlap at the bottom and slightly at the top. You know it's then gonna cover the whole of the lens. Don't panic, your screen's gone dark. Do not panic. Right, we are literally, again, gonna play with a shutter. So we're gonna bring it down. So if you keep an eye on the exposure bar, uh, what you wanna do is, you're going through this, is bring it down so it's ideally sitting on the zero, or sometimes I do slightly underexpose my shot, so it might be one stop below that. But that currently is giving me 13 seconds. 13 seconds exposure. So I'm gonna press the button and shoot that now. So what's happening now is I've um, pressed the shutter, the shutter is now open, and basically is letting light leak through that ND filter, just gradually over that 13 second in period. And because these cameras and the technology and just how clever they are with the calculation, as long as you get the exposure bar pretty much to that zero, don't take it over, otherwise it'll be overexposed, your shot should be one in focus, but should be perfectly exposed. Right, so that was using a 10 stop. Uh, there are other stoppers you can use, a three stop, six stop, 15 stop. There's loads of different stoppers. You need to pick the ones that are more suitable to you. Now if we take a look at the photograph here, 
Um, what you'll notice is that the ripples in the water have now disappeared and you've got some really nice reflections. You've even got cloud reflections in the water. And also, if you look at the sky, you can see a little bit of drag. That's what I refer to movement in the clouds. That's my terminology. Um, so it becomes a little bit, well, not realistic. And some photographers don't like this. They like more of a natural shot. Try it out and see what you think. At the end of the day, it's your photograph. If it's something you like, then use the ND filters because it opens up a whole different world. A few pointers for you just to help you out. Light. As I mentioned before, photography is always about light. Here, the conditions are changing. When I first set this camera up, there was a lot more clouds in the sky, which means it's technically darker. That's going to affect your exposure. As the clouds are dispersed and the sun's come out, it's now got lighter. So the exposure's changed again. So you need to be mindful of that when you're selecting your ND filter because obviously the light's gonna change. Using a free stop, um, you'll probably get around about two to three seconds exposure time. That wouldn't be enough really to freeze the water as you saw earlier with a 10 stop. Um, but what it is good for, the freeze stop, is if you've got like waterfalls or if you've got the sea coming in and you want still to have a little bit of movement in the water. It's a completely different shot. It's a shot that I personally like. You may not like that. So how does the freeze stop glass compare? Sorry, my hands are cold. So cold. Uh, right, this is a six stop. So six stop free stop you should be able to see through the free stop because the glass isn't as thick where the six stop obviously it's a lot blacker brighter basically means a lot more lights coming through which basically means that the ND filter isn't going to be as powerful as you want it to be so you're going to have to use a higher ND filter to expose longer to make it darker am I confusing you because <laughs> I think I'm confusing myself <laughs> right it is cold, it is freezing, the sun's coming up, so I'm hoping that's gonna warm up. The wind's just starting to pick up too, so I'm thinking, ah, I'm not gonna be able to fly my drone. I hope you found that beneficial. Please do put some questions down below. It is really difficult trying to explain it rather than doing it. Hopefully that helps you out, but don't be put off by using ND filters and grad filters, because to be honest, they just create a whole new world for you when you're shooting photographs. So go and give it a go, don't be afraid. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Leave a comment down below, because I'd love to hear from you. But for now, stay safe guys, toodle pip.